What's good, guys? Who is today here? Welcome to another episode of Afrobeats Weekly, the podcast about African music on the continent and the diaspora. Welcome to episode 31. Shout out to you guys for always tuning in. Uh, we've seen the pod on like a couple of end of the year raps. Really thank you guys for streaming and downloading and checking in with us every week. Thank you guys very much. Um, as usual, before we get into this episode, I need you guys to please rate and review the podcast engage with us it helps us grow helps us get noticed so as you're listening from your favorite app right now just leave that five star rating and comments we'd really appreciate that thank you very much guys on today's episode of afro beats weekly we will be discussing the state of nigerian hip-hop in nigeria it was a whiskey versus hip-hop debate on the internet this week uh, we've also seen the spotify and apple music yearly raps uh, we'll be getting into that briefly on the review tip, we've got that Chapter X album by Mavens, African Body by Yemi Alade, and as usual, new songs, spoilers of the week, turntable charts, Eliminate, and all that other good stuff. And I got my G with me, show. What's going on, brother? What's good, man? What's good? How you doing, man? Hey, man. Hey, how your side now? Good, man. Uh, so funny that uh, this kid decided to come for hip hop this week. So <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to dive into that. I was like, "F all of you, who's, who's next?" <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, I just like F all of you. Yeah, that was Wiz. Wiz just being Wiz, I guess. That's his <laughs> finish is calling him daddy. So, so I don't know, <laughs> but I can't wait to hear what he said. Anyways, yeah. no fan mail this week. So, you guys, don't forget to send us messages at fanmail at afrobeatspod.com at fanmail at afrobeatspod.com So, let's get into today's show. Obviously, news making the round, biscuit hip-hop debate, which became like a full ongoing hip-hop debate that pops up every once in a while. We'll get into that shortly, but um, let's kick things off with um, Spotify and Apple Music recaps. We've all tweeted and shared our replays for the year. So let's quickly get into the top artists and let's do top three albums from like Apple Music and Spotify and see if there are any surprises. So for Artist of the Year, for Spotify and Apple, um, Burner was Artist of the Year for both of them. No surprises there at all to me. He had an amazing, amazing year. Obviously, Love Damini was a commercial success. His hit single, Last Last, was up there commercially with like the best of the best this year. So in terms of Artist of the Year, I don't really think that was up for debate. Some people might argue Asha K, but if you look at the demographic that uses like um, Spotify and Apple, I, I think Bernard takes that easily. I don't know what you think. Yeah, it's pretty much. So you, you want to take a look at it as to numbers because it's, it's pretty much just numbers, right? Um, Ashaka dominated within, you know, the Nigerian realm, but Bernard yeah. did better, like, you know, within Niger, within West Africa, the whole of Africa, the whole of Europe, like, you know, every, the whole diaspora, Bernard sure. ruled the entire summer. So, yo, can't, you can't take it away. No surprises there at all. Let's get into their albums, um, the top albums um, of 2022. The Apple replay, the hard um Biscuit made in Lagos at number three. The money with the vibes at Shakira at number two. And they had Burner at number one. For Spotify, it was Playboy at number three. Ashakia at number two. Burner at number one. We love that minute. So again. Yeah. I don't think that is a yeah. <laughs> it's not surprising at all. Easy. Easy money. Yeah, no, not surprising at all. I was a bit surprised to still see made in Lagos like making top rounds on Apple, but I guess that essence is still powering through and you know, powering the whole album. So I'm not surprised there either. Pretty much, man. I think the deluxe came out like end of last year. Yes, yes. So it's still like... Exactly. Yeah, it's so still like it was different. like the most played album like in the beginning of the year before Burner like, you know, dropped exactly. his album. Exactly. So yeah, so that's why. True that, true that, true that. So let's get into ours. <laughs> Obviously, uh-huh. we've, we've tweeted and posted ours. So what Afrobeats um, albums, but there are up to five Afrobeats albums on your uh, on your Apple Music. I know you're an Apple Music user. Yeah. How many? How many uh, albums? Five. Um, there were actually three, so I had a ah, I had okay. a top three. Okay, let's have yeah. it. Um. So number three was off of one song. <laughs> was um, 
was Hawaii Music Volume Three. Ah, okay. What, what song was that? What song did you play the most? The song we all played, man. Yo, man, that song. <laughs> that song be my top five. I mean, my top five songs of the entire year. Yeah, so um, that was number three. Then number two was Mr. Money with the Vibe right now. Shaka Steady. Um, and then number one was Love Dummy. Ah, Love Dummy Major, of course. So mine was a yeah, little man. different. I think we had one, one, thing, one album in common. I actually had like five in my top ten, which wasn't surprising because I listened to a lot of Afro beats this year. So number five okay. was Pretty Boy by Fireboy for me. Wow. Number four was Billion Dollar Baby by Shea Vibes. <laughs> that yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, was, I wasn't even surprised when the guy was like, okay, yes, yeah, obviously. Number three was Mr. Money with the Vibes by Asha K. Wow, that low? Yeah. And my, 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 my top two albums. I know, okay, I know you're number one and two. Okay. Okay, what, what's, yeah. my, what's my number two? I know you're number one, first of all. <laughs> yeah, okay, you know my number one. Okay. What, what do you think my yes. number two was? I'm thinking number two was, uh, what was that guy's name again? Number, yes, the um, guy you're thinking about. <laughs> Obong Jack. Obong exactly. Jack. <laughs> I was like, what? I say, you realize that you, you did my list, don't go. So my number <laughs> two was Some Nice I Dream of Doors by Obong Jack. And my number one, I, no surprises. I that. Boy Alone I by Omale. <laughs> So those are the five albums that made the cut. Omale was even high up there, safe. Like after Kendrick was, Omale was like my most played album this year. Which <laughs> I, I wasn't surprised. I don't know why I don't like the album, but when it comes to album yeah. of the year, if I get the album of the year, like maybe next week or next two weeks, we're going to we're going to trash this out. We need to trash it out. Uh, yeah, well, bro, bro. Don't worry, don't worry. I, I got, I got, I got PowerPoint presentation for you. Okay, okay. And I'm not surprised. People be like, oh, Bernard didn't make my list. I don't know why. But I, like I said, well, oh, ne- next week or next week, we'll argue it up. We'll argue it up. But let's no, get into... I understand into... why you didn't make your list, but... Ah, okay, <laughs> yeah, you, you tell me when we get there. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. All right, so let's get into today's topic, the hip-hop in Nigeria discussion debate that was mm. sparked by the Biscuit interviews and the now deleted um, Snapchat stories. So the backstory for people that don't know, um, this kid did an interview with Ten Magazine, and they got to the topic of Afro beats in comparison with like other genres. And this kid said, and I quote, um, "Afro beats is the new pop. I sold two million copies in America off one song. Even some American artists don't have a diamond record. If I'm being honest, I don't listen to any other genre of music. I don't listen to rap." That shit is boring to me. It's dead now. It's tired. These guys do the same shit. Rap on the same beats, same flows. So obviously, this sparked a lot of debates. Music people <laughs> going back and forth. You know, most people. I just wanted to make a. I just wanted to make a couple, just a tiny correction. Yeah. Number one, number one, is that he said um, it would go diamond. I mean, two million is not diamond. He's thinking in <laughs> uh, he's thinking in uh, UK terms, but yes, two million yeah. is not diamond. <laughs> so we'll, we'll clean that out for you. Okay, okay, okay. Let's continue. Sure. <laughs> Let's continue. <laughs> uh, anyway, obviously, this sparked a lot of debates. You know, everybody was going back and forth. Most people was talking about Nigerian rap in particular for some reason. So that narrative just took off. Um, then this rapper named Ola Dips came, released the car freestyle. I won't call it a diss, just like the light jabs here and there, and the thing spiraled, and the conversation got to blogs. The name of the freestyle was Tell Me Say By The Way, which <laughs> a lot of people accused this kid of saying. So most likely, I think maybe we saw it and took offense, then posted some stuff on his um, Snapchat before deleting them, but, you know, internet, nothing gets deleted, everything is here forever. Um, he said, in the snaps, broke boys, I can't believe your broke boys really thought big whiz will talk about y'all. Y'all not even rappers. Nasty C, Sakodie, Black Sheriff, the only rappers in Africa. Y'all dumb fucks. Y'all keep sending in a popsy rap videos. I got to watch them. Maybe I feel help my mama. Ouch. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. this one was a direct shot. This one, nothing is considered about this one. This one was targeted at Nigerian rappers. Then this sparked another debate. 
So my question is, is hip hop really dead in Nigeria? Okay. So before we get into this, the, to the arguments, yes, sir? I don't understand that. I want, I want to just say that, first of all, people are too touchy in the internet. Yeah. Right? People have their emotions all up. One, from that statement that he made, yeah. right? It wasn't about Nigerian rap. Nigerian rap. It wasn't about yeah. Nigerian hip hop. It's, it's simple like that. Hip hop is, and it even like hip hop in the States is, it's the same beats, it's the same flow. Everybody that has made it blown like this year, it's the same beats, yeah. the same flow. Everybody, everybody in hip hop complains about that. Yeah. So for Wiz to say, oh, like, you know, hip hop is a dead genre or whatever, you know, it's the same beat, same flow. It's kind of valid because people in hip hop complain about the same thing. That's okay, wait, let me cut you short briefly. Not to cut you short, but to cut you short. Should he shit on a genre that give him all the important steps? So, MI, Fast Money, Fast Cars, went on there to go to um, UK, his breakthrough in UK, Skepta, his breakthrough in America, Drake. So, people are like, should he like, actually be saying he doesn't care about like, a genre that has propelled him to the heights he's recently and now? So, that's another question. Okay, so that question doesn't like. I can, I can. I'm a hip hop fan, yeah. but I can come out at any point in time and say hip hop is trash. Yeah, because of majority of it being trash. I kind of, you know, like it's it's apple and orange. Is kind of because you're like pick, you're nitpicking exactly the same, like every single yeah. word. But hip hop fans in hip hop say it every time, and this hip hop shit is trash. Like. And we just and we keep it moving. Like nobody's ever going to come out for you. Like yo, man, are you trying to say that Kendrick is trash? Nah, man. Major, if majority of the music that you know has been presented in hip hop, you know, coming out of hip hop is trash, you can generalize it and say, look, all these things I'm hearing on the charts because let's say we're looking at top ten, you know, songs in hip hop this year or whatever, and yeah. they all sound the same. We can generalize and say, look, man, rap music is boring. Should we, we not? stay yeah. boring or more commercialized? It's not more commercialized. It's boring because there's no difference. Like okay. the same one record is sounding like the same record just sound like it's another different record. Now, if we bring it down to Afro beats, within Afro right. beats, there's a there's a there's a formula sound. However, the top guys are separated by their sound. Shaka does not sound like whiskey. Whiskey yeah. does not sound like Burner. Yeah. Burner does not sound like Fireboy. Like, can you can you see the difference within the Afrobeat pop, yeah. you know, realm? So if everything is different within that realm, like the top guys, yes, you still, the trenches guys almost always all the time sound the same. Yeah. But, you know, within the top guys, they're all different. So, therefore, we can then come out and he can, he's justified in what he's saying. Now, Coming back to the other argument of him, like, you know, you know, shitting on them after that, you know, yeah. incident. I don't feel like that was right. You know, that's that's not a here or there, but yeah. <laughs> hey, that's that's just me. Yeah, I get you. But for me though, like is hip hop really, I don't think so. I don't think hip hop is dead. Um it may not be, especially hip hop in Nigeria, if I'm bringing it back here, it may not be where okay. it once was. Like, you know, even though like Afrobeats has kind of like swallowed it. I think rap yeah. music and hip hop music is still very much here. I think what most people, especially like outsiders, and what I tag like hip hop purists, is that that traditional hip hop sound, that rap sound, isn't there anymore. And like you said, like everybody sounds the same now. But in Nigeria, if you look at rappers like Fowls, Zlatan, Naramali, I mean, Paul had like arguably the biggest song of the year a few years back if not two years ago so these guys are rapping yeah. like, I guess it may not be you know what we what we want to hear in terms of lyrics but yeah. where they craft their music these guys have been able to like commercialize this commodity and build a movement out of it so I don't think hip hop is dead obviously there are a lot so, of problems so, yeah yeah so what I wanted to also say that is like within you know like bringing it back home yeah. Yes, hip hop is not dead, and why hip hop is not dead is because not everybody has to be on the same level as with Burner. Yeah. 
like hip hoppers can be on that level right now because Afro beats as the pop sound yeah. is in the forefront. It doesn't it doesn't take away from like you know the SDCs carving their own lane and having like festivals every single year. Okay. Nobody nobody does that within like even in pop guys don't even do that, right? You know it doesn't you know take away from you know the MI and Chocolate City also carving yeah. their own lane and having their own you know their own following. It might not be because like that sound they can't go and do like big ass shows in like yeah. the UK or do that big shows in the US. But they still have their own lane. They're still making their music, and they're still making their music for their fans, you know, wherever the fans are. And they, still, yeah. they still have their little following, so it's not as big as Afro Beats, but you can't shit on it and say that you're dead. I get you. So, what do you think the problem? What do you think the problem is in general? There's no, there's no problem. It's just it cannot be big right now because Afro Beat is in the forefront. Everybody takes the everybody takes a how would you put it like. A, Everybody has their time to shine. Yeah. And this is Afrobeat's pop sound time to shine. So let it shine. The yeah. hip-hop guys just, yeah. you know, they just have to do their own music, you know, and just manage what they have, manage the, the couple listeners that they have. And that's it. That's yeah. what it can be. Remember what we said every time, man. Make your good music and grow your fan base. That's all they have to do. Exactly. Exactly. Make your music to grow your that fan point. Base. Yeah, yeah. Grow your fan base. And Again, growing your fan base is making music that actually connects, you know, because hip hop like is such an American culture, the tendency to want to copy yeah. beats, their beats and you know, sound like them. It's normal. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with like drawing influences from the culture, you know, tweaking your sound here and there, whether it's blending it with African elements, whether you want to rap in pigeon, whether you want to find yeah. something to sing on the chorus, find whatever works for you. Just find a way to build your core audience and make music people want to listen to. You're actually very right with that. Yep, man. Yeah, yeah. And again, the is it onus they say, I mean, whatever, whatever they want to always say, it falls on us as listeners and as supporters of this culture to, you know, support the movement, however it is we want to support. If we want to put uh, money there, if we want to, you know, give them a section on highlights on radio or whatever, but we just have to amplify the music we love, you know, stream their music, share the music, tell people, encourage these guys. I mean, I think that's the only way the hip hop culture will move forward. And again, I just want to say nothing can ever really die because one man says he's dead. It's just one man's opinion. So if you are listening to <laughs> this, you have like music, um, just know that the genre you are in is a very niche genre. So you just have to keep pushing, keep pushing till you get that breakthrough. That's that. So that was the hip hop conversation, the one biscuit said we should have by fire by force. <laughs> I'm just to keep up um, next year again sometime. But again, let's just support these guys, man. This one I really very biased hip hop. If, if you've not noticed, notice now. <laughs> so let's <laughs> uh, new songs and albums. We kick off with new songs. Um, let's kick off with Alarm by Bayopun. I'm just gonna let you know that this week, yeah. I'm just gonna let you know straight up. This week, there's only one song we should be talking about. But keep going. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know if it, when we get there, shall I, I'll let you know because I, I actually enjoyed one song more than the others. But <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna let you know when we get to that. I love my Bayoku. You know, at first I didn't really, I don't really feel this. One. I don't know why because I wasn't concentrating. But it grew on me a bit. You know, I think it's really like he arranged his lyrics. He shared drag measure, kind of technical, young fire part. Very easy song, very simple. The song is very short, so I think just over two minutes. So I like it. It's a, it's a very cool song. Uh, another entry to the Mayo Pum bag, Alarm by Mayo Pum. Um, yeah, so like I said, just because of one song that came out this week, I didn't really... This is not for me yet, okay? <laughs> this is not for me yet, you know? I gave it like two listens. I was like, ah, no, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Bowling by Feels For You. That that's is the song, song of the week, man. That is the song of the week. Okay, okay. <laughs> that, that's my second most played song out of this one. Not even mad at this one. Feels is just grown into his element as an artist and I absolutely love it, man. Yeah, man. Nah, we're not talking anything. This is the song of the week. Play this. Play it all the time. Just keep playing it because, oh, man, come on. This is the jam, man. This is the song. <laughs> This is the song. Rizzy yeah. Makula, you... Yeah, that's it, that's Yo, it. Man. Ole Gone by Malik Berry. Another one we're pumping. I love this one. You know, there are my piano, drums, 
crowd chorus. Um, I don't know, you guys should just sleep on this one. This was another creeper, like another one that if it gets played, you know, often, it's going to grow on you. It's a very nice song, only gone by Malik Berry. I don't know what you think. Yeah, I mean, Malik Berry doesn't really do bad songs, right? I mean, it's easy to listen to, as always. You know, I'm yeah. sure he handled the production as well, so uh, yeah, no production. So yeah, good song. Yep. So, Thug Love by A.V. And if you don't know who A.V. is, or if that name sounds familiar, he had a big barrel hit last year with Big Thug Boys, you know, they lie, you. One of my favorite songs last year. This Thug Love, this one is very, yeah, it was one I sang it, yeah. <laughs> so this one is a very groovy, very smooth jam too. I'm pretty sure you guys are going to love it. So, let's know what you think. Thug Love by A.V. Yeah, this made it onto the playlist as well. I mean, I'll give it a couple more listens, you know, after I'm done with one. But yeah, this is this is a really nice song. Yeah. This one is the one that I spun. Let me not go and say spin. This one is the one I spun the most. <laughs> Game Changer by Flavor. I don't know why, but this song... I don't know why. It's very up-tempo. Just gives you that Ibo Cap Chip vibe with pointed shoes, spray mint. <laughs> very, very hyper song. I know it is going to, I'm going to be pumping it to the gym tomorrow to give me some motivation. Game Changer by Flavor. I absolutely love this one. This one is one I had to repeat the most. You guys should check it out. Let me know what you think. Okay. I mean, I, I can't knock it off for that. But yeah, it's, it's <laughs> good to kind of hear Flavor back. And not yeah. just, you know, back. Or it's back with it actually, is like, as you said, an up-tempo song. So yeah, um, this, this probably would also stay in the playlist. So yeah. Yes, sir. So let's move into albums. Let's move into albums. We've got Chapter X by the Mavens. First of all, I'd like to say big up Don Jazzy. You know, Maven is 10 years. The amount of talent that has come out of that place is incredible. We has been able to rebrand the label and stay relevant is absolutely amazing. So in celebration of a decade of Maven Records, um, the new guys are here with Chapter X album. Ten songs, you know, X, mark the X, I guess. <laughs> Production from yep. the new producers, they signed a while back, Seven, JVXN, Prestige, and of course, Don Jazzy and Andrew Vibes. The album kicks off with Ale. I love this one. Don't wait to kick off the album for me. I think they got it right with Rema taking the first verse, you know, merging it with the chorus, and I start like knocking it out of the park with her voice and that beautiful harmonizing. Um, Losing You was another favorite of mine with Jenny Drill, Crayon and Magix. And then the final song, I like that You song. The album isn't bad at all for me. A couple of songs were on repeat. A couple of songs make my continuous playlist. Uh, but I'd say, obviously, yeah, it's always difficult to put out projects like this because of the amount of like talent you have. You know, you're trying to find who fits on what song, who fits on this song. So I feel like the album didn't do justice for the newer guys. Like, I didn't hear enough Crayon and I didn't hear enough Bayani. I couldn't differentiate their voice. It was kind of hard. Even when I went to the, like, lyrics, they didn't say, oh, Crayon and his verses will come up. It was just like a whole long ass verse. <laughs> so I felt like they were going to on solo tracks. You know, maybe Crayon featuring who oh, or Crayon featuring Rema, like, so that their voices can register. But apart from that, yeah. I think the very... The same project for me, I'd say 6.5 out of 10 for me. I don't know about you. Oh, that's that's actually not bad. Um, so like you mentioned, you had two songs on the album that were really good. Yeah. And just so crazy that the two songs are track one and track ten. And, and two. <laughs> I call it track one, I track two. Yeah, so Ale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, I, I felt track like one, track. Ale. And track <laughs> ten was you with Johnny Drill and like, so those are like my favorite songs and then yeah. I had like the song with like um, Poe which was like I think of Ogini and something like that yeah. so those three songs make it for me as you mentioned everything in the middle kind of get you kind of get lost with like who's on yeah. the song like, I can't even tell who's who but generally speaking I mean it's a good thing for them to like, showcase what they do and maybe you know some of the songs you know stick for some people and when they go to the concert, they can say, oh, so it's Crayon that was on this song. Exactly. Things like that. So I'm guessing this is to this album is basically to work for 
you know, the concerts, or maybe if they shoot like a whole lot of videos, you can then see who is who, who sang the first, who sang that. So, I mean, hey, can knock it, so. Yeah, I, I, can't I, knock I, it at all. Yeah. Uh, I'll give it a six. Okay, okay. Chapter X by Mavens. What do you guys think? Let us know. So from that, we also played African Party by Yemi Alade. Another 10 track album features from Pino, Zlatan, Spice, and a couple of others. And I'm not even going to lie, Yemi Alade's music isn't for me. I feel like a core fan, <laughs> a core fan, a core fan base will enjoy this. You know, it doesn't shoot too far from the Yemi Alade we all know in terms of lyrics. She sticks to her formula. Obviously, she's got the voice. A couple of decent songs here. But again, I, I'm not a target audience, but I feel like if she makes this kind of music and still sells out arenas and goes on tour, obviously people love it. Obviously people love her. And this is who that album is for, African Body by Yemi Alade. I don't know if you were feeling the album. Like, like we've all been saying all the time, you know, she's growing your fan base. And Yemi Alade has done that. And she is not trying to fight with anybody fans. So if you know, you know, you have like the winding wastes, you're from yeah. the culture of winding waste, which is basically Francophone countries. Uh this this album is for you. Huh? Like Yemi Aladdin, that's that's our target audience. That's our market. She's not staring away from them. She's not trying to fight anybody, not Alte crowd, not Afrobeat land crowd in the States and Canada, whatever. She's just going after African foam peoples. That's so this album is probably, you know, this album is probably gold to them. So, I mean, it kind of works. Pounds and dollars, you know, kind of sound nice. And KB with Zlatan. Yeah. Those are kind of two songs that are really nice. Then, of course, I like Begging, which is a final track. So, but besides that, man, it's this is not for us. It's for, <laughs> it's for our crowd, our main audience. Yeah, so, you know, I, I think it's a them. good business decision, you know. Follow the numbers, follow your fans, follow what works for you, make music for them. Yeah, man. Person like them, go like them. Person who like them, they go like them. So, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> and, uh, that's Africa Body by Yemi Alade. Those were the two I bumped um, and the two albums I, I really got into this week. I don't know if you have any other stuff to listen to. So, I got into an album. I don't know if it's an album, an EP. It was called Miss Calls by. Dina Day, um, seven tracks, seven tracks on it. Um, nice, nice. It's really like this all take kind of vibe. And her voice is like, her voice is like, how do you say it? I would say it's like her voice is like butter because it's always low. Mm. And so it's like pretty much like butter she's, voice. she's trying to seduce you and like <laughs> seduce you through your, through your speakers. But it's a really nice album if you know you vibe with that all take sound. I love there's a song called Bounce that's really. It's a kind of sexy song. Uh, but the best of the standout song on the album is Sweetest Taboo featuring Dremel. Um, ah. So, yeah, you should check it out. Oh, and the very last song is called For You. That's a single that I think she released maybe earlier this year. I've always loved that song. So, when the, she said, hey, an album is coming out, let's have to check it out. So, really dope album. You should check it out. Miss Called by Dina Ade. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. We'll do Miss Calls by Dina Day. So those were the albums we're filling this week. Chapter X by Mavens. African Body by Yemi Alade. And show had high praises for Miss Calls EP by Dina Ade. You yeah, should check it out. Let's know what you think. So let's move into the spotlight of the week this week. An artist named 808 Vic. This guy is very different. I think he's based in London from the little research I did. I absolutely loved what I heard from the guy when he popped up on my radar. Um, very low, you know, he makes this very low-fi music. That one that fits mm. right in that chill study bit. Um, his last project, Big Odyssey, is just a two-track project. But you can also check out his um, Lived to Love project last year. This is one of those guys I think will be killing like Coachella and festival stages in a few years' time. His name is ah. It's with Big. You guys should check him out. I sent it to you. I don't know if you felt the small Yo, impact. I, you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm gonna get into it, but I mean his name is kind of tricky, but anyway, <laughs> big. Okay. Yeah. We'll it'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. So let's we'll see how that goes. But I like it. I think like 
you know, has that different sound that Coachella festival stages are going to love. So <laughs> that's why I just <laughs> stuck out for me. Yeah. Anyways, let's get into this week's charts. You know, a couple of changes here and there, a couple of re-entries, and we've got a new number one that is not so new, but it's back at number yeah. one. <laughs> Turntable Charts brings you the best performing artists and songs every week. Thousands of songs are tracked across radio and streaming platforms in Nigeria. So, let's kick it off. Number 10, making a re-entry is Electricity by Fields and David Doe. Another re-entry is How Are You My Friend by Johnny Drill at number 9. Two Sugar, Whiskey featuring Ayasta is going down at number 8. New entries, Ashiwaju by Roga coming up. Number Seven, Joha stays the same. Joha by Ashake stays the same at number six. Rush by a star coming down to number five. Have one demo by the Maven crew at number four. Low Dead, Tiwa Savage and Ashake stays the same at number one. Sorry, at number three. Number two coming down, Extra Cool by Young John. And replacing it is Cough or Door by Chris Daniel. <laughs> So that song, I don't know, he's doing a madness. Went down to number three, came back to number two. Now he's back at number one. And that is this week's turntable charts of Odo by Chris Daniel at number one. So let's get into our five this week. Um, it is pretty much, I think both of us just piggybacking off that um, <laughs> hip hop convo. Uh, uh, five hip hop projects I enjoyed this year. This is in no particular order. Um, so let me just say, I think number one, I'd say Culture of Honor by Tito, you know, entirely produced by Bigfoot. You guys should check that one out. At number two, I have Eriga. You know, he also dropped a dope album this year with um, Lost Boy. Lots of great features with Modu Black, Jerick. I know like Eriga always comes through with that witty line and, you know, that worry swag. At number three, I have AQ and Brian move with a dope-ass rap album with Itos. Not just rap album, an all-round good album for me. It was another Bigfoot production. Um, lovely album. You guys should check that one out. And number two, Emma Abaga also dropped Guy. You know, a lot of good pops were on this album. But I don't know if it wasn't properly pushed and promoted. You know, there was stuff like Tony, that uh, bigger with Ola Media and Nas, which should have been bigger. <laughs> but I don't know why. So, Emma <laughs> Baga. I also dropped the guy. And number one for me, Black Bones Without a Doubt, the Young Preacher album. I feel like Black Bones came into himself with this album and gave us very, very good quality and enjoyable music. So those were my five albums I really, five hip hop albums, five rap albums I got into this year. So let's hear yours. All right. So it's pretty much, it's, it's pretty much the same except like two albums. So. Yep. At number five, yes, Tito Sivo's Culture of Honor. Um, short album, uh, had a couple bangers, a couple storytelling in there. So uh, that's for me, that, that was sweet. Number four, surprisingly this low, was M.I. Abaga, the guy. I don't know, man, like, there's just something about the album, like the middle part of the album, as you always said, like, you know, trying to make songs that were like, yeah. with the, you know, his market, but kind of just didn't resonate with me. So maybe that's why it's low at number four. At number three, the album that, to be honest, I still don't know a single verse from this album, but it just plays nice every time <laughs> I play it. <laughs> it's like a YP, uh, YP season three. Trust yeah. me, like, it's just, it's just good vibes. Like, you just listen to it, it's nice vibes. At number two, um, off of one song, Mine Alone, <laughs> on my chat. <laughs> it's Palm Wine Music 3 yeah. SDC Trust me man This uh Palm Wine SDC That formula Is a hit It's not going anywhere soon And At number One Is Black Bones Young Preacher Which should even be like In my top 10 you know, Albums Apple Beats Or right. album, like, albums But this should be there Because I play this album Die So yeah That's it I don't matter it is at all, man. Like we said, support hip hop projects. Don't let one man just come and be saying and abusing us, guys. You know, let's <laughs> let's support <laughs> our own. 
<laughs> so from there, we are still keeping it all things hip hop with the eliminate uh, segments for the changes in the building or upcoming artists in hip hop. If you are looking for a blueprint Nigerian rap album, an album I personally consider the best Nigerian rap album. To me, critically acclaimed, commercial success, MIs talk about it. This album has so many gems. I think the only criticism I always have for this album is that it didn't shoot enough videos. Um, and one that's of true. our faves, yeah, to me, it didn't shoot enough videos. That, that's just the only thing I have. And one of our faves, <coughs> Biscuit, <coughs> and you know what <laughs> many consider his breakthrough songs, his breakthrough, you know, this day, on this, on one of the songs on this album. So it says, MIs talk about it. That is for eight songs of this. And we're going to try and see which one is show's ultimate eliminate song. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. So we are doing Anoti, Anoti Lele eh, versus Area by YQ. I'll be by MI featuring YQ. So Anoti versus Area. Anoti, easy pick. <laughs> I'm not wasting time this time. I right, know it's easy big. Sure is never wasting time with that one. Um, crowd mentality, I think is first single, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And again, breakthrough single for Biscuit, fast money, fast gas. Um, just because you you have to like remember when crowd mentality came in. Yeah. Like, the vibe of crowd mentality, um, it blew us away. It blew yeah, us away did, just before. So that, that made us long for the album. So because of that, Crowd Mentality takes that. Crowd Mentality takes that. Fast Money, Fast Cars, yeah. Eliminated. And we have... Elementi is a big booty pleaser. This yeah. song is criminally yeah. underrated. <laughs> so it's Blaze between Chuck Boys and Blaze herself. You know me now. So teaser oh. versus Blaze. <laughs> now this is a hard one. Yeah. But you know me now. <laughs> please, 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 please. Yeah, so Rush, let's take is off here. We got Blaze standing. We have on the next round Safe versus Money. When this video for Safe came out, or when the song came out, it blew a lot of people's mind. Obviously, Money, one of those underground bangers are still relevant up till now. Safe versus money. Money slow. Safe can take this. Safe can take I this. Show doesn't even yeah. think about it. I think it's very rich. So it's like safe just gotta take this. Show got, <laughs> show got no money problems. <laughs> so yeah. we have an OT versus plays at the next round. Gotta pick one. See, first of all, I know that everybody will agree that an OT is the biggest song. And MI is pretty much the biggest song besides like a number one. But right. Yeah. But what Blaze does for me is for me, man. What Blaze does for me, man. Okay, I can I can't explain it. So uh, Blaze about, is that. Yeah, about to disappoint a lot of people, man. So Blaze <laughs> over an OT. <laughs> All yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. big Blaze over an OT. Sorry to you guys that, that was picking an OT. We also have safe versus crowd mentality. Crowd mentality. Thank you. Crowd mentality again. <laughs> Show doesn't even think about that. Crowd mentality it is. In the final round, we've got Blaze with Chuck Boys and Blaze herself. And MI's first single, Crowd Mentality. Jump, jump. Hey, wait, wait, wait. jump. <laughs> the Blaze versus Crowd so, Mentality. Final round. Where do you swing? It'll be, it'll be, it'll be just to like pick Blaze because it has like too many verses from other people. This yeah. Thing the best song on my top uh, album so because of that just because of that I love Blaze I love it I really do love it the song and the and the artist but Proud Mentality takes this Proud Mentality last song last song standing on MI Abagas Talk About It album on the Eliminate segment there you have it Proud Mentality if you guys haven't bumped this album and you're listening to me right now I know what to say you guys should check it out. It. MIs talk about it. Fantastic, fantastic rap album. And with that, we've come to the end of the show. Another one in hopes. Thank you for listening to this episode of Afrobeats Weekly. We hope you enjoyed it. 
new episode of the podcast drops every Monday. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your pod from. We'd also love to hear from you. Use the hashtag Afrobeats Weekly. Give us comments, suggestions, send new music, then wherever we listen. Fan mail at afrobeatspod.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media, Afrobeats Pod. We'll catch you in the next episode. We're out, guys. We're out. Peace out.